y'all for letting me speak to y'all. Uh, my name is Chris Odom. And for the most part, uh, self-defense is what I want to speak with y'all about. But I have a whole list of other things, but I'm going to try to make it clear. Uh, my name is Chris Odom. I'm 25. I, uh, I'm not from here. I'm from Mobile, Alabama. Um, I've lived in Gresham since I lived here. And uh, I was part of a nonprofit program called REAP, stands for Reaching and Empowering All People. And it kind of got me more involved in the community and wanted to see more of a change. So uh, what I have here today is a list of uh, workshops, programs, and ideas that we're trying to implement into the black community, into the community period. Um, and I want to say thank y'all again for let, letting me speak. And I don't want any of y'all to be offended by what I say. Um, and very happy that you said uh, you have the Black Lives Matter shirt, but uh, Black Power Matters as well. And that's something that I want to speak on. Um, so the first thing that I want to talk about was uh, self-defense. Um, what we have going on is we have about six brothers who's skilled in mixed martial arts. And they're willing to teach um, people of the community uh, not just people of color, self-defense uh, tactics. Um, what we're doing is we're stocking up on gloves, mittens, and just things that we could use to practice. And we're just trying to find a space for us to get all of that set up. And that's something that'll be uh, coming sometime in 2017, probably June or July. Um, and if you guys want updates on that, you can find me on Facebook. Uh, the second thing that I want to speak about was that we plan on having is firearm training, uh, safety, and education. I took a uh, gun permit class from the um, NRA, unfortunately, out in Gresham. And it was, it was very interesting because I, I personally hate guns. I've never grown up around guns. I just... I mean, I'm a big fan of Batman, and Batman hates guns, so I really, really, I really don't like guns. So it was a big step for me to go and take that uh, course. And through that course, they were asking me, because the way that I dress, if I have experience with guns, and I'm the only black person there, so people are trying to talk to me and be my friend or whatever, but it was cool. So I went there, and they're telling me these scenarios, they're giving us these scenarios that don't seem realistic. It's like, Kind of like in the George Zimmerman case where he's not a police officer, but the NRA is giving police officer rights to these people taking these classes. So if you see something wrong happening, you have the right to pull your gun out and assess the situation. And it was very weird because it doesn't seem realistic for me. It looks like if I have a gun on me, I'm not going to want to pull it out for one because I'm most likely going to get shot if the cops see me with that gun. So I didn't really like that whole the uh, permit class that they offered. Um, I did take the test and it was pretty interesting. Um, I passed it, surprisingly, I never shot a gun before, but I passed it, did a headshot on the little, uh, the little simulation, it was pretty cool. But uh, I do recommend, even if you don't like guns, just take the course so you will learn more about it, learn you know safety, just educate yourself on it, just in case you need to get a gun one day. Um, and now I actually do own a gun now. Even though I don't like them, I do own one because of just how the world is. Uh, the second thing that I want to speak about was uh, sometime in 2017, we plan to implement a health and fitness workshop, um, health and nutrition workshop, uh, financial literacy classes, uh, speaking about credit, debt, investments, and uh, budgeting. Um, one of the things I'm very passionate about that needs to be retaught ASAP is sex ed because um, a lot of the schools, <laughs> a lot of the schools aren't really doing a good job at teaching that. I mean, there's, uh, I have friends that don't know anything about birth control and have like three kids now. It's like they love their kids, but if they knew about birth control or sex ed, period, they wouldn't have been in that position that they weren't ready for. Um, and a lot of the uh, young black males don't know enough about sex ed at all. Um, one of the second things that I'm super passionate about is education on uh, sexual assault education and prevention. Um, 
unfortunately, a lot of the women that I've dated or talked to throughout my, my 25 years of living have been molested or raped, most of the time by a family member. And no one talks about that, no one talks to the black males about that, no one talks to, it's not even a black thing, no one talks to our males period about that, so they grow up not having any kind of empathy or sympathy for the women who go through this, and unfortunately it does happen to males as well, but we are even more afraid to speak about it than the women are because multiple reasons. But uh, I think that there needs to be some kind of conversation with the students about that. I mean, it's kind of, it's, I know it's hard because you don't want someone else talking about that kind of stuff with your kids, but if you're not gonna do it, let someone else do it because they need to know. I mean, I don't want my little boy growing up, you know, around someone else who knows nothing about it and kids like to experiment. I just don't want my kid in that situation. I don't want your, your kids in that situation either. Um, the uh, other thing um, that we are kind of implementing and supporting is uh, support black owned banks, um, home ownership workshops. Uh, a lot of people in my community don't have any desire to ever own a home because that's just not something that they see possible. I mean, myself, I didn't think that was very possible because no one I grew up with had a home. We always were in an apartment, our friends were in apartments. Our parents are in apartments, our grandparents are in apartments. Um, so it was never really a, a, a dream or aspiration to own a home. Um, so that's one of the things that I would like to get started um, or just have more low income people involved in, learning how to save up for a home, learning what it takes to, to own a home. Um, we are hoping to get a kind of like a workshop for life insurance, car insurance, and health insurance. Um, mainly life insurance because again, in my community, no one talks about life insurance, no one. So when they pass away, the family, the next of kin has to, you know, try to get all this money up for burial and all of that stuff. And no one really prepares about that stuff. No one prepares for that kind of stuff until it's too late. Um, informa information on trust funds, wills, and uh, power of attorneys. Um, know, your, know your rights workshop. Um, I found out that a lot of states have different, different laws. I mean, even if it's the same law, it's slightly different as far as like staying your ground and what you can and can't do. Um, in some states, you could go to jail from the simplest things, you know, get five plus years for the simplest crimes that you could get maybe just a warning from another state. So I think that's very important to uh, know what Oregon is known for going hard on and what you could get away with. Um, a, a big thing that we're trying to promote is black empowerment and education workshop. Um, this is the part where I say don't get offended. Um, as a black male growing up in Mobile, Alabama, and then coming to Portland, there's a lot of things that I realize now that I didn't before. And some of these things I'm speaking with my kid about, and I'm trying to prevent him from seeing black people in a negative light. Um, since birth, black people, we grow up with the ideology, a lot of us, that we are less than, whether it's going to church and having a white Jesus or looking at our money and there's nothing but white faces on it or going to our schools, like a lot of the Portland public schools, some of them are named after slave owners. Um, the back of the nickel has a slave house on it. The White House was built by slaves. I mean, the list goes on and on. Um, we look at our TV shows, just how they show black people isn't most of the time in a positive light. So when it comes to black empowerment and education, it's more of teaching black people that we're more than the stereotypes that are put on us. We don't have to be basketball players. We don't have to be, you know, know all the rap songs. We don't have to sag our pants. We don't have to talk, you know, improperly or whatever you want to call it. And that's pretty much where that goes as far as black empowerment and education.
Um, something else we're pushing in the uh, black community as far as black power uh, is creating new traditions and festivities. Um, it's such similar to Kwanzaa, Juneteenth, or um, RBG Unity Day. Some of y'all don't know what some of these things are, but it's to kind of replace some of the things that we're used to. It's like Christmas. I mean, some of y'all, it's okay if you celebrate Christmas, but um, with my family, we celebrate Kwanzaa. And as far as uh, 4th of July, uh, some of you guys don't know, but during Independence Day, white people were still slaves. Um, and I just think it's, it's, it makes me uncomfortable that so many black people willingly celebrate 4th of July Independence Day, but we didn't have our independence on that day. Um, another one is President's Day. I'm not going to go into that one. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the list goes on as far as we need to not only as a black community, but as a community that acknowledges all the bad things associated with these specific holidays like the 4th of July. I mean, the Confederate flag is really bad, but slavery lasted longer under the United States flag, longer than the Confederate flag. So in a sense, kind of the same thing, in my opinion, in my opinion. Um, <laughs> Don't hate me. Uh, another thing I want to speak on was, in the black community, we want to speak to the young black kids and all kids in general about fatherhood and kind of have a workshop centered around women's worth. Because growing up, I mean, even though a lot of me and my friends grow up raised by mothers, we grow up kind of not appreciating women and then we grow up unfortunately manipulating women and it's just it's bad we don't value ourselves we don't value fatherhood we don't value women and i think that the uh, black men in the community need to speak with the youth about their role and the importance of them taking care of the little people they put into this world and appreciating their mothers um another uh, thing that we want to implement is agricultural, farming, and gardening workshops, um, a driver's ed program that I'm hoping one of the uh, major uh, community organizations like Urban League would support. Um, when I was, I think I got my driver's license at 19, and it cost me about $400 at a driver's ed program out in Gresham. Uh, they no longer have that program, and I think it's very important to help the youth, uh, low income youth, not just black youth, access the ability to drive. Um, a lot of the kids that I know, they drive illegally and then they get their license, but they don't have a license. But they get tickets and they get their license suspended before they get a license. And I think if they had a, a program, a driver's ed program, an affordable driver's ed program, it would help a lot of the low income youth have more access to better jobs, and overall, it would just be better for the community. Um, I'm almost done, y'all. <laughs> um, the other one is supporting local uh, small businesses. And yeah, for the most part, um, my goal is just to implement these things throughout this year and the years to come. Um, like I said, I'm not from Portland, but I lived in Gresham for about 10 years now. Um, my son actually lives around the corner from where Larnell was murdered out in Rockwood. And I've had instances out there as well. I mean, it's, Portland's not that friendly of a place. I mean, since I've lived here, I've had eggs thrown at me. People call me the N-word. People throwing stuff at my son and my mother while they're going to the store. I mean, I've been chased in a car by a skinhead in a car as well while I was on a bicycle as a kid. And the list just goes on on things like that that happen, but no one hears about it because we don't have advocates. I mean, we do now. We have Don't Shoot Portland, but I mean, five, ten years ago, we didn't have that. So I just want to bring that to the light that this is something that a lot of people go through, but it happens so often that we see it as the norm now. We just, we're just exhausted. We don't even know what to do now. I mean, every, every month there's a new black person getting murdered. Like, 
we're kind of just numb to it now. There's no, it feels like there's no solution for it. So I want to say thank you guys for coming out and showing that you care about, you know, what's going on in your community in America. I mean, America has a really crappy history in my opinion, but it looks like things may get better the more that we talk about things that are happening with people other than ourselves, that don't, people that don't look like us. So I really do appreciate you guys coming out and supporting black lives. So. <laughs>